Hey there, Sunbelt fans. Coming to you from New Orleans, Louisiana, I'm Katie Morris. We've got Funbelt Hoops coming at you in a big way this week, as well as some exciting news from San Marcos, Texas. This is Sunbelt Conference Weekly. Arkansas State men's and women's hoops are off to one of the best collective starts in school history as both teams sit undefeated in league play. Let's take a look at what's heating up in Red Wolf country. Arkansas State men's and women's basketball are both 4-0 in conference play after both squads defeated Louisiana Lafayette in a doubleheader on Saturday. The men's team overcame a 20-point run by UL Lafayette and defeated the Cajuns 71-69. Everything that could have gone against us the first eight minutes of the second half Missed layups, missed open jump shots, missed two free throws, uh, and then we made some plays. We started making some of those shots that we missed. Uh, we just made some plays, and that's what, what teams do. Junior guard Devin Carter led the Red Wolves with 25 points and 8 rebounds, while junior guard Dante Thomas tallied 20 points. Sean Gardner finished with 13 points, including the game-winning basket. Oh! The win improves A-State to 8-7 and seven on the season and remains atop the Sun Belt standings with Little Rock and UT Arlington. The win marked the fifth straight for the Red Wolves, the longest win streak since a six-game streak in the 2008 season. Our team is developing some unselfishness and some chemistry, um, developing the intangibles that good teams have. In the women's game, three players scored in double figures as the ladies also remained unbeaten in Sun Belt play with an 83-56 win. And one player's performance earned her a weekly nod from the Fun Belt as senior forward Kadeja Brown Haywood is your Sun Belt Student Athlete of the Week. She turned in her third straight double double with 22 points and a career high 18 rebounds as A State ran its home winning streak to 16 games. And if you missed any of the Sun Belt basketball action last week, don't sweat it. Here's everything you need to know and the matchups you don't want to miss. Sun Belt Conference and in-state rivals Arkansas State and Little Rock own the league in the men's basketball standings following the close of the second week of conference play. The Red Wolves earned victories against UL Monroe and UL Lafayette, while Little Rock defeated the Raging Cajuns and the Warhawks in overtime. Little Rock received two votes in this week's USA Today coaches poll for the third time this season. The Trojans are a perfect 6-0 at home on the season and are tied for the national lead with seven true road wins, making it the best start in program history at 14-1. Georgia State stayed within a game of first place as redshirt junior Jeremy Hollowell, the men's basketball student athlete of the week, led the Panthers to back-to-back -back wins. He posted a pair of 20-point performances in the home wins against Troy and South Alabama. The win on Saturday was the Panthers' 14th straight at home and improved Georgia State to 32-1 in the GSU Sports Arena since the 2013 season. We've got a busy Thursday ahead for Sunbelt men's basketball with two matchups coming to you on ESPN3. The Raging Cajuns head to Georgia Southern and UL Monroe will continue their road swing at Georgia State. On the women's side of the court, two sides of the Sun Belt spectrum collide on Thursday when UT Arlington's top scoring defense meets the conference's highest scoring offense at Troy. And we've got two ESPN3 matchups as UL Lafayette looks for their fourth win against Georgia Southern. For more information, you can visit sunbeltsports.org. Arkansas State cornerback Rocky Hayes is attending the 2016 College Gridiron Showcase. Let's take a look at one of 2015's most impactful players. Former Arkansas State and all Sun Belt Conference cornerback Rocky Hayes is currently attending the 2016 College Gridiron Showcase in Bedford, Texas, and is set to conclude his time at the three-day event on Wednesday with a scrimmage against other top college seniors from around the country. The College Gridiron Showcase provides exposure and education for top seniors, Hayes, selected by a panel of experts, is among a group of players participating who are receiving professional coaching, mentoring, and classroom-style education. Hayes will participate in the scrimmage at Pennington Field, showcasing his skills in front of scouts and executives from top professional leagues, such as the NFL, CFL, and AFL. Hayes earned first-team All-Sun Belt Conference recognition following his senior season that saw him post 52 tackles and six interceptions which tied the second most in the league. The College Gridiron Showcase is being held for the second consecutive year. A total of 81% of participating athletes received opportunities in the NFL. Big news out of San Marcos, Texas, as the Texas State Bobcats introduced Everett Withers as their new head football coach. Let's take a look. Texas State University introduced Everett Withers as the school's 16th head football coach. Withers comes to Texas State after compiling a 25-13 career record and guiding his teams to two NCAA Division I FCS playoff appearances and a berth in the 2011 Independence Bowl in his three years as a head coach. 
During the past two years, he led James Madison to a combined 18-7 overall record, including a combined 12-4 record in the Colonial Athletic Association. I heard one statement uh, a lot in that interview, and it came from our president. It said, I want to win the Sun Belt. And uh, I think I looked back at her and I said, I want to win it too. <laughs> Under Withers, the Dukes won a share of the CAA championship in 2015, the school's first conference title since 2008. Withers became head coach at JMU after coaching stints at Ohio State, North Carolina, Minnesota, Texas, Louisville, Southern Miss, and Tulane. He also spent seven years in the NFL, coaching six seasons with the Tennessee Titans and one with the New Orleans Saints. A native of Charlotte, North Carolina, Withers was a four-year letterman as a defensive back at Appalachian State. He served as team captain in 1984. He and his wife, Kara, have a daughter, Tia, and a son, Pierce. We're at a pivotal time in, in the program. I, I, think it's, I think it's right at a, at a time where we can take it up a notch. Uh, but we've got to start now, and uh, we've got to uh, go to work really fast. And that'll just about do it for this edition of Sunbelt Conference Weekly. Be sure to join the conversation on social media and follow the Sunbelt on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. For all of us here in New Orleans, Louisiana, I'm your host, Katie Morse. Thanks for watching.